Today on Bridges, we'll be talking about caring for a parent that has dementia. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm glad that you could join us today. Today we'll be talking about caring for a parent that has dementia, and my guest is Mike Glenn. He is a pastor, he's an author, and probably more importantly to the topic that we talk about today, he is a son. And so, Mike, it's good to have Thank you, you on Bridges. Thank you, Monica. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. So I love the title of your book, Coffee with Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. What well, when we, when we finally moved her up here... Uh, the retirement center where she was uh, was on my way to the church. So I'd always stop in and have coffee with her on the mm -hmm. way in. And so the book came out of a series of social media tweets and everything from our conversation. Mm -hmm. Because my mom was always funny and she was always strong, but as the dementia kind of uh, began to work uh, in her and, and those those little guys in your head that keep you from saying what you're thinking yeah. as they kind of went away. We had, we had some interesting conversations. Yeah. So, and I, and I would kind of, you know, put out the morning tweet or whatever and everybody would call me and go, Hey, my mom did that. My dad did mm -hmm. that. And, and so the book comes out of the conversations that came from, from those conversations in the morning. And I'm so thankful that you could be with us today, Mike, as we talk about this, because, you know, as you said, it, you know, in one of the things that I read, we're either all dealing with this right now, or at some or point we will. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have parents, they're going to get older, and even if it's not our parents, someone right. is going to develop dementia, and that can just be heartbreaking and gut wrenching for people. I know that mm -hmm. your mom always played an important role in your life. Right, uh, grew up uh, in, in a great Christian home. Mm -hmm. My mom played the piano in the church. Uh, all of the gospel songs and the great hymns, they were the soundtrack of my life. Wow. Because they were, if she wasn't in the kitchen or tending to one of us, she was always at the piano mm -hmm. playing. So, I, you know, I know all the old songs and people, you know, will sing a song or something. And I'll know the obscure verse. And somebody <laughs> says, how do you know that? Well, just, just my, my mom. mom plays it all the time. <laughs> uh, my mom was the oldest of four girls mm -hmm. and her mom died when she was a young teenager. Which, my, which means my mom literally grew up overnight. Mm -hmm. and if you have to understand, my mom had no adolescence. She mm -hmm. went from being a child to being an adult. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, my mom was one tough lady. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, you know, we used to tease her that she couldn't be in steel magnolia because she didn't have any magnolia. She was just the steel. So she kind of yeah, like ruled ran, with an iron she fist. She ran everything. Yeah. And you were gonna yeah. listen to her and do mm -hmm. what she said. Mm -hmm. When I told her, when I was finally taller than her, I, I stood next to her and I said, Mom, I'm taller than you are. And she just looked me up and down. She said, you'll sit down for me to slap you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I said, and I guess I thought about it. So I guess I, if you did, you walked away and said, I'm going to slap you. I said, okay, I will. Yeah, but, so, yeah, so she knew her role right. and you knew her role. I knew her role. So, <laughs> so it, it's wonderful to hear someone say that they grew up in a Christian home oh, and that yeah. gospel music was a soundtrack for their life. And obviously, you know, you're still a Christian still, and a oh, pastor. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. she did, she did my, well. My dad taught Sunday school and, uh, and I learned to love scripture listening to him get ready for his Sunday school lesson. So that was where that came from. And if you stayed Saturday night with us, and you were with us on Sunday morning. Mother did not ask if you wanted to go to church. She would tell you what time <laughs> we were leaving. And uh, so we took all kind of friends who had never been to church. So Good they for were, her. They, they, were, they were at <laughs> church with us. But my dad had a bad heart. Mm -hmm. And she cared for my dad for over 20 years. And she was his primary caregiver. 20 and, and, years. And, and you talk, well, the doctor told me later, he said, I didn't expect your dad to live five years when I first met him as a patient. Mm -hmm. And it was mom caring for him. Yeah. And because mom was consumed by, by caring for him, mm -hmm. uh, when the dementia started showing itself, I put it off as being fatigued, uh, overly concerned with dad, so if she missed the utility bill or something like that, mm -hmm. I didn't think anything about it. Now, dad told me, uh, he said, I'm worried about your mom. Oh. And he would he would tell me something like that, and I would I would kind of say, Dad, she's just tired from she's all right. Yeah, and uh, and that's what I thought it was for a long time because I know for two years, the last two years of my dad's life, she did not sleep, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I'm, I I kind of kind of well, and that factors in I, too. I gave her I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, Mom is 
And, you know, she wouldn't let you help with Dad. She cared for him. Well, she probably knew how to do it better right, than everybody else. And did it better else. than anybody. Uh, and so when Dad passed away, then I began to see, okay, mm -hmm. Dad, Dad was right. Mm -hmm. I should have listened to Dad. I should have paid more attention. I don't know what I could have done other than maybe be more, be more ready. Right. Uh, but when the strongest person in your life suddenly looks at you and mm -hmm. doesn't know what to do next, that is the worst moment of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a moment, yeah. you know, it's a moment that none of us no, expect. Uh, and when it comes to your mom or your dad, you're nine years old inside. Mm -hmm. You're just always nine. Yeah. And, uh, and when we, when they delivered my dad's tombstone and we were there to receive it, if you know, if you don't pay for it, they don't take it off the truck. And so we were there and mom got out her checkbook and then she just lost it. She didn't, she didn't know where she was. She didn't know why we were there. And so I said, I, I, I just patted her on the leg and said, I know this is tough. Let me take care of it. We'll figure it out when we get back home. And I said, this is just hard. Yeah. And, uh, but that was the first episode of where she just kind of flipped out of reality on right. me. And, and you know, but that again, that's another thing uh, that yeah, you that might you can think. Kinda, you can kind of cover that. Yeah. And, I, and this is something that I've heard, Mike, so many people say when it comes to aging parents and mm -hmm. things like that. There, there might be these red flags or right. these signs, these cautionaries, and yet... We can look at their life and think, well, you know, they haven't slept a lot lately. They just had that. surgery. Uh, Maybe it's medicine. So first, what I'm hearing is it's really hard for us to accept. It's really hard for you. Now, she had uh, acoustic neuroma, which that put us in the, uh, the Vanderbilt care system. And the great thing about, about being in Nashville, as you know, is we have access to some of the greatest care in the mm -hmm. world. Uh, the bad thing about being here is there's always a doctor who's really glad you have what you have. <laughs> 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 who just wants to run down there and run all the tests. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the tests were pretty definitive. Mm -hmm. uh, but mom was still mom. I mean, she would look at me like, there's nothing wrong with me, and I don't know why I'm arguing with you about this, and, and, and who do these doctors think they are? They don't know me, and you know, they ask me who the president is. They, ask me <laughs> who this, they don't ask me anything important, you know. <laughs> Well, she was right about yeah, that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and the book, again, is Coffee with Mom, and it's authored by Mike Glenn, and it's about caring for a parent with dementia. So we're talking, Mike, about just how hard it was for you to come to that realization that the strongest person in your life and such an Need influential you. role model needs you now yeah. to take care of her and what that's like for you and for people that are watching. You know, it's hard. Always. Yeah. And it, it, it's hard every day. Yeah. I, I shared with you, it it's a challenge for me to, it hurts me to watch my parents age. Mm -hmm. You know, they were the two strongest people that like I right. ever knew. I remember saying mm -hmm. my dad's stronger than your dad, mm -hmm. right? To keep That's it right. plain, right? <laughs> I, I remember all of those things and to see them as growing older is hard. Right. How did you... How did you go through that, and how do you help us in the book go through that? And you ha still had these great conversations with yeah. your mom. Uh, well, first of all, understand that this is coming, okay? It's coming for you. It's coming for your parents. So go ahead and have the hard conversations. Get all of the paperwork taken care of. Get the power of attorney taken care of. Understand where the, fi where the finances are and, and, and that kind of stuff. Now, I know they're hard, and I know everybody, but you need to have that done. It's even harder in the pain of grief if you're trying to find things and you don't know where they are. Exactly. Uh, and I was fortunate, and Dad told me before he died exactly how he wanted things ha to happen, mm -hmm. how he wanted me to care for Mom. So I had the peace of knowing that even when Mom was mad, I knew I was doing exactly what Dad wanted mm -hmm. me to do. Yeah. So if you love your family, go ahead and get that taken care of. Uh, the second thing is know that this is just what love requires. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes uh, love always seeks the best of the beloved. Yep. And sometimes that means you have to step in and make the hard calls. And if you love them, then that's what you're going to do. You're going, right. to, you're going to help them get to a place where they're safe. You're going to help them get to the kind of treatment they need. Uh, and it, no matter what kind of adjustments that that requires of you, and it will. It will change your right. own life. Well, I think about, Mike, you know, when we're born into this world... Most parents do that for their children. That's right. Right? They don't know what their schedule is going to be mm -hmm. like. They don't know what challenges mm -hmm. and blessings will come with this child. And that was the moment that, that changed for me. When I realized that 
my mom was 19 when I was born. Mm -hmm. And, and I showed up with no instruction book, no manual, no nothing. We never had a conversation about, hey, <laughs> hey mom, here's what I need. Here's what I expect of you. Here's the kind of person I am. It was always assumed that she would do what was best for me, mm -hmm. even when I didn't like it, right. even when I didn't understand it. I always knew she loved me. And in her mind, she wasn't perfect. In her mind, she was always doing what was best for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when you finally uh, realize that as a young adult, then, then you're okay with your mom if you understood that she was doing the best. Exactly. <laughs> now the time had come for her to trust me. Now, there was never a meeting. We never sat down and said, okay, mom, if you have Alzheimer's, here's what we're going to do. Here's how I'm going to handle it. There was never that meeting. It was always just assumed, Mike, you're my son. I raised you to do what's right. Uh, I know you love me, so I'm going to trust you to do what's best even if I don't like it, and even if I don't understand. Right. And that we still love them even when they don't yeah. like it and when they don't understand and when mm -hmm. when she might have been angry because they're yeah. asking her about the name of the president and, Mike, why are you letting <laughs> all of this happen to, to me? Why are, you, why are you stealing all my stuff? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, had to st you had to stand in mm -hmm. that parental role mm -hmm. of, I'm committed to doing what's best mm -hmm. for you. And tell her there's nobody in the world right now who loves you more than I do. Oh. Now, when my, before my dad was alive, I could not say that. Mm -hmm. But now my, my dad had passed on, uh, and my dad gave me really specific instructions. I tell her, I told her, I said, I'm the only man who knows where to get two votes to get into heaven. <laughs> Jesus is going to say, well done. And then my father's going to step back and go, hold on, Jesus, I need to talk to my boy about things I told him to do it <laughs> and make sure. Because, uh, I mean, you know, my dad had a way of letting you know that what he was telling you was law. And so, so you had two parents I that had, just really I loved you and parents, that set yes. the record straight and yes. let you know we've got to take a break. I want you to stay with us here today on Bridges. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk about coffee with mom. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we are talking about caring for a parent that has dementia. We're looking into a book called Coffee with Mom. And Mike, you've really shared about how you were really just God blessed you with a beautiful, oh, strong Christian yeah. family who mm -hmm. imparted all these good principles. And there came a time when your mom got older that you needed to invest yourself in her, that she needed to trust you to care for her. And you know, I'm, I'm aware that so many people watching may not be able to say that they had that same idyllic, you know, mm -hmm. Christian home, and yet we're called to love, to, to honor, honor. honor your parents. Mm -hmm. it, it's, and, and the way that that commandment is written is there's, there is something about a lover of God, a follower of Christ, that one of the first ways we see that is you honor your parents. Now, I always wanted to say, if your parent is honorable, it doesn't say that. No, it, it doesn't. It says, you honor your mother and your father. Amen. And, and when we, the book was first written, I had to go back and add a chapter that said, taking care of loving your parents when you really don't like them. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the short version is, the gospel gives us the power to love somebody even if they don't love us back. Mm -hmm or even if they were mean to us, we are free from having to repay them That's right. for all that they've done to us. We don't, we don't live that way. And so there are situations where you're going to be having to take care of your parent, even though they may not have been a particularly good parent. Yeah. And so you do the best you can anyway. And, and that's one of the things I want people to understand is every person is unique. Every situation is unique. And what worked for that family or worked for, you know, uh, the other parent may or may not work today for what you have to deal with. So you deal with what you have to deal with today. Do the best you can. 
And if you can look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I love them the best way I knew how, given all the information I had and all the resources I had available, I did the best I could, you'll be, you, you'll be okay. Now, it, it, it hurts every day. Mm. And there's a long grief. Uh, and you lose them little bit by little bit. You know, you show up one day and she can't remember the story you told yesterday. Or one time she told me a story and it was a beautiful story. But the three people in the story didn't live at the same time. And she had confused them and put them all together. And had you not known, you would have believed the story. <laughs> so it's like one of those things that somebody else, like if I walked in, right, I would have believed the story. You but you brought, know, yeah. this, is, this is an expression yeah. of my mom's dementia. Mm -hmm. What kind of lessons, because I would imagine and that you have this in the book, Coffee with Mom, that you had to learn all kinds of lessons in this role reversal and in your conversations and your coffee with mom? <laughs> you know, people would say, Mike, that's just the illness talking. That's not her. The problem is it looks like her. Yeah. And it sounds like her. <laughs> and I have heard that voice, and that was the voice that when she said jump, I was on my way up, mm -hmm. you know, how high on my way up. And now she is telling me I've stolen everything. I have, I've, I've done all this. And again, every, every situation is unique. My mom is extraordinarily strong and she only respects strength. So what I learned was every now and then she would bull rush me. She would just come at me with everything she had uh, because she was afraid that I would not be able to handle the moment. Mm -hmm. And if I could stand there and go, now I know you're mad, that's okay. Uh, we can talk about it, but this is the decision I've made and this is what we're gonna do. Uh, then she would relax. When she would realize that I was strong enough to, take, to make the decision and take care of her, she would relax. Then she's going to fuss about something else, but, <laughs> but, but that moment of challenge would be over. Now, that's just part of the uniqueness of my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what did you do? I mean, you know, what does a person do? Because I have a friend who told me that her mom thinks that she steals from her and that she oh, takes yeah. the checkbook and the mom has dementia. And, like, none of that is true. Like, my friend is absolutely not doing that. No. What do you recommend? Uh, keep a journal. <laughs> And uh, because all of the, it happens so fast uh, that uh, you can't remember literally what the doctor said, what your mom said, what your dad said. So write it all down and keep really good records because you can't remember. And uh, about, hey, here's, here's how I take care of her, here are the receipts, uh, and that kind of thing. So, uh, so if you are ever challenged by another spouse, uh, spou uh, a, uh, a brother or sister or something, you can always, uh, take care of that. Yeah, because um, it can cause big family big, dilemmas big family, because it big, sounds big, convincing. Big family issues uh, and you'll walk in and mom would say something to some other, I'd walk in and she'd say something totally different. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, friends would call and say, hey, your mom, and said, she, called in the, she called one of our lawyer friends in Huntsville where she's from. And, and told him all of it. He called me and said, hey, I just want you to know your mom called me. <laughs> said, okay, <laughs> I guess I'll see you in court here. So, so uh, you but, kept um, really good records really in good case records, anything was said to you. In case anything was said. That you uh, could explain. I could explain any, anything and everything uh, uh, about her. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one, she's just mad. This is not the way she wanted her life either. And while she may not know everything, she knows enough. She's in a place she doesn't want to be. Uh, she never called the, the assisted living place. We were a beautiful place. Uh, she never called it uh, Morning Point. She never called it the, my apartment. It was always the prison. Are you going to take me back to the prison? <laughs> that had to make you feel awful. <laughs> Well, that's just my mom, you know, and that's just, you're going to take me to the prison, you're just going to leave me over here, you know, and uh, then, then the next day I'd show up, she says, you know, I've been waiting all morning for you, I got here early to get our place so we could have coffee, you know, and, and it would be, it'd be a great visit, we would tell stories and laugh and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that kind of stuff, and then the next day it'd be something else. And how, how would you, and I know that you go over some of this in the book, Coffee with Mom, how would you just coach or help someone who's going through this? Because that's a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Like to one day be accused of theft, <laughs> to another day I got here early, yeah, son, yeah, so yeah, that yeah, I can have coffee right, on the table. Right. And you still have all the responsibilities and obligations of your life. Right. And your 
vocation and, and your family, mm -hmm. how did you stay even keel? Well, it, you, ha you have to uh, take care of your mom takes time. And so you have to adjust. They, you have to figure out a way to work that in and let some other things go. You learn not to vacation more than an hour away from her. Mm -hmm. uh, because as soon as you go off, uh, she'll have a crisis. She had the acoustic neuroma that made her deaf in her right ear. Well, one morning, they call me from the emergency room. She's over here. Why? Well, she woke up this morning. She was deaf in her right ear. She's always been deaf <laughs> in her right ear. She just woke up this morning and remembered she was deaf. And so she created the crisis. I've lost my hearing. And, mm -hmm. and off she goes. So you go over there and you say, Mom, don't you remember the doctor said this is what? Oh, yeah, I remember that. So you just, sorry, guys. Here we go. <laughs> And so, really, what you're talking about, I mean, as I listen to that, I think this requires a lot of prayer. A lot of time, a lot of prayer. You have to take care of your own soul. Yeah, and a big sense of humor. That's right, because, because you're always giving out, nothing's coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's so much like parenting a newborn, right. parenting a little one. The book, again, is called Coffee with Mom, and it's authored by Mike Glenn, and it's about caring for a patient with dementia. And one of the things that Mike has said today is just so important. If we're not at this point in our life, we will be at some point, or we will have a friend who has a parent struggling in this way. And Mike, one of the things that I've heard over and over from anybody who has a parent or a family member or a friend struggling with dementia is the heartbreak that they feel that maybe they're not recognized, like their mom doesn't know their name or can't remember who they are. And you know, just this disruption right. of the normal cycle of life. Do you give some tips like that in the book? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one, uh, you have to bring all the energy to the relationship. Mm. And you have to know, if, I, if the conversation is going to happen, I'm going to, I'm going to carry it. Uh, I'm going to begin the story. I'm going to remind mom. Now, I never got to the place where mom did not know me. Uh, Thank God for but, that. But, but yeah. I'm not sure she knew me as I am now. I'm, I, I think I was much younger in her mind uh, because that's the way she talked to me mm -hmm. uh, is that she would kind of give me orders as she did when I was a kid <laughs> and expect me to, you know. Go get uh, the chores go, go done. Get, go get the chores <laughs> done, that kind of thing. Uh, but even when that happens and they can't know your name, a lot of times, Alzheimer patients know they just can't make the connections. Mm -hmm. uh, but even in that moment, you know, back back to the baby analogy, uh, you love that child long before they ever said mama or daddy. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, and so Absolutely. they'll know. More importantly, you'll know. Yeah, and and, uh, and, and it, that's a long time to live with regret. Well, it. It's a very long time mm -hmm. to live with regret. And I've known people that when they look back think, I wish that I could have been nicer. I should have. Been, I yeah. wish that I could have just fluffed that off instead of trying to engage my parent as if they were in their as, 50s. As if, yeah. Trying to regain mm -hmm. what we knew our parents to right. be. And, and that's gone. That, 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 that's gone. The mom that, that, that raised me was gone. Yeah. So isn't it... Wasn't, isn't that like its own grief process? Its own grief. Its own grief. And you cry every day. Oh. When, when you leave there and you realize I've lost something else, mm -hmm. you cry every day. And that's just grief. Uh, and uh, and the, the thing is you want to you put it off or deal with it later or whatever, and then it'll come out sideways. But you just have to understand, uh, dealing with Alzheimer's is a long, long grief. Yeah. And that it's best if we deal with it yeah. at the time. At the time. Because I know people who, they crash and burn because, I mean, we're talking hold on to it, hold on to yeah. it, be resentful, be resentful. And then one day they're just done and sick mm -hmm. of it. So you're also a Christian and a, and a pastor, and we've got just a few seconds left. It's biblical to grieve, isn't it? All and the time, it? yes. Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and you just need to give yourself permission just to, hey, this is just where I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm in that valley of shadows. Yes. And uh, he, he, he didn't promise that he would take you around it. No. Nope. He'll always take you through it. That's right. But he won't leave you. That's exactly right. He won't. I want to thank you so oh, much my, for coming my, today. My privilege. My and privilege. And for sharing these stories and 
you know, the things that you've learned. It's been wonderful. Well, I hope it encourages folks who are, who are dealing with the same situation. I absolutely know that it will. So thank you thank so much. You. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back with closing comments. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yeah. go after that. Don't give in. God's Word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith, and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org. When it comes to caring for parents with dementia, I think the one thing that we have for sure established today is that it is not easy and that life sometimes takes us to places that we don't want to go. And yet, with every challenge, with every adversity, with everything that is presented with us in life in a fallen and broken world, there is one thing for certain that we can count on. And that is that if we love Jesus Christ, if we are a Christ follower, that he will never leave us. He may allow us to walk through a really dark valley. And certainly watching your mom, your dad, a family member, or even a close friend age, watching them show the signs of dementia. Perhaps they don't recognize you or say mean, hateful things that they would have never said years ago. We have God's word that says he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. And we also have his word that tells us that we need to love and honor our parents. And sometimes we're just really gonna have to tap into the strength of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to show that honor and to show that respect when really hard things are happening and when perhaps untruthful things are being said to us because our mom or because our dad has dementia. But God promises that he's going to help us through. And I hope today as you heard Mike Glenn share his personal story of coffee with mom and how he cared for his aging mother with dementia. I hope that it encouraged you and challenged you to do the same for your parent or parents. We're out of time. We've got to go, but I say goodbye and God bless you.